Hi guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk about reducing your paint for low painting and we're starting right now. Alright guys, let's begin. Now first of all, let us understand paint and how reducer works and what effect it has on paint. Important to understand is that paint is a resin combined with pigments. What I mean by that resin is like you have some kind of carrier that carries these pigments and transfers transfer them over to your lure or something else you're painting. Uh, because without you would be spraying just pure pigments and they will not adhere that well. If, even if they dry, if you got some mixed it with water or something, there is nothing that will make it adhere to your uh, surface. So that's why a resin or a carrier is really important and that's how paint is made. So you got your pigments and you got your resin. Now if you add thinner, that is gonna thin it down, meaning that it's gonna thin down your carrier. It's gonna thin down this very resin. So basically if you're using too much thinner then you're gonna thin down your medium too much and your paint is like water so it would it would dry up no problem it all looks fine but it just doesn't adhere as well because it's it's just evaporating and the properties of the median get lost so you need to find a balance between using thinner um, having your medium in your paint or adding extra medium so in order to get a good flow of your paint it's important to use reducer but not too much that you uh, degrade the medium too much but you want to have a good flow on your airbrush also depending on the air pressure in combination with how much reducer you use but um, I'm gonna show you guys a little bit more on that right now so first up I want to say real quick that many people say that Createx colors really shoot bad and they don't like it and they say it's the worst brand you can have but uh, I beg to differ it's it, you need to use this product properly. You need to add the correct thinner and maybe some balancing clear as well, which totally change the, the composition of your paint and also a flow improvement and your spraying ability, which is really important. So knowing your paints and knowing what products to use together with them to get the best result is very important before you start saying that a product really sucks because I can shoot this all day long. So before saying that a brand is really bad or their products are really bad, it's really important to know how to use them first. So here's a little example. Always shake well. This is Wicked Black and as you can see, you can see how thick this is. The drop is really big already and it just doesn't want to fall down. That's because this is a really thick paint. You see guys how thick that is? That is really super thick. You can see it on the bottle as well. It's super thick. That's like the equivalent of, that's like as thick as acrylic paint that you should brush on. So guys, as you can see, this paint is not running down at all meaning that it is so thick I am not even gonna try to shoot this so for someone who doesn't use reducer or not even the correct reducer yeah it, then this is not gonna work this is gonna give you tip dry and all kinds of problems right from the start so I'm just gonna thin this down a little with 4011 from Createx they also have another kind of uh, reducer just add one little drop now they also got another kind of reducer which is 4012 now I use this one first um, I don't like it that much it's a totally different reducer I find it it doesn't mix well with the paint it still gives you a lot of tip dry and uh, there is no flow improvement it like doesn't make your uh, your paint spray that well while the 4011 really makes a huge difference so now at least you can see the paint is at the bottom of my airbrush, which it wasn't before.
lines are a little darker again because the the medium keeps the pigments all well together so it's they are less spread out now because I got a I got more medium now so the lines are uh, darker the pigments are closer together you get better coverage you get a more even result on your lines or coloring or shading so if I take a little bit more black I'm gonna mix this with about 10% 40 30 and a little bit more than 10 percent thinner let's mix that up again like so back flush why I do a back flush is just to get the, the paint that's that's in here at the needle you blow that back and you mix it with uh, the the paint that you mixed in a cup because or else if you don't do a back flush you will be shooting your last paint first which is not mixed with um, as much reducer and 40 30 so you do want to have that mixed up very well and I always shoot the last little bit on the side first. Now if I shoot this you can see I have more control and the pigments are way closer together also for fine lining have a very nice control now it all comes out very smoothly very easily I'm shooting at about about 30 psi and it goes super smooth now if we would do this on a plastic lure I'm gonna take this spoon for a second it just represents a plastic lure okay guys let me show you if you have the correct mixture of balancing clear and 4011 with uh, your createx paints you can really layer it very subtle or either uh, a quite wet coat. So guys, what I mean by this is that you have all control if you have the correct mixture. You can do very light coats and get this light gray or you can do shading or subtle details with this. But also you can put on a wet coat and get this really dark, nice and even black surface. And as you can see all this I hadn't have any really severe tip dry uh, even though this is a really really thick paint it's just about mixing it with the correct uh, products that's the most important now I'll show you guys what happens when I use too much thinner so I only had a little bit of paint left in my cup I added two drops of thinner so that makes it like 150% thinner so now I have thinned out my paint quite a lot And as you can see on paper it still shoots quite okay but here you can already see that I am dividing my pigments let's do that again here you can also see it that the pigments the lines they're not like this anymore they start dividing that's because the thinner is pushing away or like collecting and clogging all the pigments together because there's no more medium in it to divide and dry these pigments in a in a nice level base so this was on paper and you know paper is ab absorbent so it ab absorbs all my thinner as well if I would try to paint on a lure you see what happens this is what happens when you got too much thinner in there 
So as you can see guys, it starts spider webbing immediately and it also makes uh, the paint clog up in little drops which uh, concentrates the pigments in certain areas but that's why you don't get a, a clean coverage anymore because there's just too much thinner in there and there's no medium to like divide your pigments longer. Now if I would shoot from a further distance and uh, be re really careful with the trigger You can see I can still cover my lure but it would take very long. Also my paint is very transparent right now um, and I can still blow my paint to certain areas. I can still do spider wrapping because it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't dry, at, well it doesn't adhere as it should. As you can see, there's no, there's no like smooth coverage. Let me put my airbrush away. There is no smooth covering at all. It all just clogs together. You get these drops. Well, this is a nice coverage. It's nice and even. It's very smooth and with too much thinner, it's really hard to handle, especially Especially when you're trying to do details, if I would like like to draw a small line. Not only is that line going to widen every time because uh, the paint is too thin. Also, the coverage is really bad. You can see that the darkest parts are on the outer sides of the line is because I blow my pigments open I blow them to the sides because the the paint has no more medium into it to carry it and just get a nice level smooth uh, cover so that's why it's super important not to use too much thinner because it's really hard to work with now let me really quick um, explain you guys what 4030 is now 4030 is um, a resin it's uh, what it's it's what is in between your paint and your reducer. It's the medium that carries your pigments. Now, 4030 is a little bit special because it's not like regular um, transparent base like this is. This is also water-based acrylic. So, if you would put this, if you would add this to this paint, you will just increase um, the base that's in it you will increase a little bit on transparency and everything and you will you will widen your pigments but 4030 actually changes the composition of your paint now this is an acrylic based paint if you would add 4030 you will create an acrylic urethane based paint now urethane based paints are easier to shoot they adhere better they dry easier and you get way less tip dry. The flow improvement with a new urethane paint is much better than acrylic paint. So that's why it's super useful to use 4030 with all of your paints. Uh, Createx paint, that is. Don't mix it up with different uh, brands. That's never a good idea. And urethane paints are used mostly in automotive sectors because it's easy to shoot. It adheres really well to hard surfaces, which is really important in that kind of uh, work. Now a super important question is, how much thinner do I need to add to my paint? Now it's very easy, uh, actually on most bottles it already says how much they advise you to use. Start off with what they advise you to use. If you feel like this is still not shooting well, it's still not working for me, try to play with your air pressure first, on how much air pressure are you shooting. Uh, when you're shooting too low, you'll get a lot of tip dry and your lines are not that clean maybe i can show you guys maybe that's better all right let me show you guys i'm gonna use game air from vallejo just black
and I didn't have too much tip dry but most of the tip dry developed in the beginning when I was shooting with too uh, with not enough air pressure then you you easily get a lot of tip dry with no matter what paint but as you can see it still shoots very well now I will show you guys what happens with too much air pressure I'm gonna show that on the spoon because it will make it's it's more clear on that this is too much air pressure this is 35 psi doing a close-up trying to draw a few lines you see what happens I can't stop it even when I'm trying to shoot just a little bit of paint you get spider webbing it's it's impossible to avoid this 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 doesn't mean my paint is tinned down too much so that's why I always tell you to play a little around with air pressure and your thinners as well um, there is a, there is a kind of common sense in this if you, if you use too much thinner it's like water and you know like 50% of thinner might be too much so maybe uh, add a little bit of balancing clear then but also when you're shooting up really close and you're using 50% of thinner then you will get spider webbing so it, it I'm saying it's not bad to use 50% of thinner because some people do you can use 50% of thinner but then you have to lower your air pressure a lot so still Vallejo game air no thinner I just lowered my pressure to about 20 psi maybe a little less And as you can see now I can shoot fine lines without a really without a problem so it, sometimes it's it's about air pressure as well important thing don't use too much thinner here they advise 5 to 10 percent here it's two drops on uh, 10 drops of paint for the Vallejo thinner stick with that first I'm not saying you, you need to follow that and don't go over it you can use more thinner because some paints are thicker and they would need a little bit more thinner but try to play with the air pressure first so if you're spider webbing try to lower your air pressure first before you're gonna throw away your paint and try again because uh, it might not it might be thinned down properly but if your air pressure is too high you will spider web uh, anyway and if you're getting like these grainy lines and spotted effects try to up your air pressure before adding too much thinner so I'm not saying you need to stick to the 10% you can go over it but play with the air pressure as well because it's just as important if you got any questions about this or I forgot to explain something let me know in the comments down below I'm happy to help you guys but in the meantime thank you for watching and have a nice day bye bye